Hi, my name is Surinye. I'm from Laboratory of Human Evolution here in, at the University of Burgos and I'm going to talk about factors affecting sex estimation based on dental tissue proportions. First, I'm going to do a short introduction about sex, sexual dimorphism. Sexual dimorphism is defined as the differences in size and shape between males and females on the same species. These differences refer to the entire skeleton, including the teeth. Males are larger, in absolute terms, than females. Traditionally, the study of sexual dimorphism present in permanent dentition is based on the measurement of dental dimensions. Most studies of sexual dimorphism in the dentition use the maximum mesiodistal diameter and the maximum buccal lingual diameter of the crown. These studies are mainly based on the size of canines since it's the tooth with the highest degree of dimorphism. In recent years, this study on sexual dimorphism has focused on the proportion of dental tissues of the crown. It was started with radiographs or histological sections. Regardless of the tooth, males have higher proportion of dentin, while females have thicker enamel. To avoid breaking the tooth and maintaining precision in the measurements, a methodology was developed through three dimension models in which a virtual longitudinal section can be made in order to take measurements of the internal parts of the tooth. The methodology explained so far has been developed for the specific population and has not been tested in archaeological populations who have an added problem, the presence of high rates of hypoplasia. Hypoplasia are defined as a reduction of enamel due to a period of stress suffered by the individual during the tooth formation. In this presentation, we will try to test a methodology for sex estimation through the canines dental tissue of a medieval population. In addition, this population has a high frequency of hypoplasia, so we could check if this condition affects sex estimation. 21 permanent canines belonging to 19 medieval individuals from San Pablo Monastery have been analyzed. Among these 21 canines, 15 of them show enamel defects. That is 71.43% of the total. Virtual reconstructions of the canine crown have been performed through MicroCT with a MIMICS materialized program. In this reconstruction, enamel and dentin can be separated. We have followed the protocol proposed by Smith and colleagues in 2006. We must cut the tooth crown virtually in a bucolingual plane. Then we measure the area of the enamel dentin as well the length of the enamel dentin junction. With these values, we have calculated the average enamel thickness and the relative enamel thickness. In those teeth that present uh, occlusal wear, the height of the crown has been calculated following the methodology proposed by Sander et and colleagues in 2007. We have also made an enamel thickness map to see if there are changes in the distribution of enamel between teeth affected by enamel defects and those without. In the left graph, we have represented the data obtained by sex by Garcia Campos and colleagues in 2018. Compared to the result we have obtained for the medieval population of San Pablo. As we can see uh, in the graph, the values of time uh, as a whole for San Pablo are lower than those present by Garcia Campos. In the right graph, we have separated on the one hand the canines that have enamel defects and on the other hand those do not. In both cases, the values are again lower than those presented by Garcia Campos. In this other graph, we represent the dentin area. As in previous graphs, the values presented in, by the individuals of San Pablo are lower than those of time by Garcia Campos and colleagues. In the case of the enamel dentin junction, we can see that the values of the individuals of San Pablo, both those with enamel defects and those without, are more similar to those present by the female individuals from Garcia Campos. 
When we calculate the average NAML thickness, the data of individuals from San Pablo are lower than the individuals studied by Garcia Campos, especially those without dental enamel defects. On the other hand, the relative enamel thickness, in which enamel injection is taken into account, the values of San Pablo are located between the values of female and male individuals of Garcia Campos. Finally, we face the distribution of enamel thickness in canines with and without enamel defects and we see how the distribution varies as we would expect. We are aware our sample size is small, so these results should be viewed with caution. In the population of San Pablo, we observe fewer amounts of enamel and dentin in absolute terms. But if we compare in relative terms, our population will fit into Garcia Campos sample. We could say that the population of San Pablo has a small size dentition and that we should establish a specific methodology for each population. Also, there are no differences in sex estimation in canines with enamel defects and those without, despite the fact that this is a condition that directly affects the tooth enamel. We hope to continue analyzing the sample to make the results more robust. I would like to thank Laboratory of of human evolution and to Tenia in Burgos, and this research has been funded by a Spanish government project. <laughs>